my name is Tim. I come from Artisense, and we're a computer vision and AI company, and we specialize in autonomous control and piloting. So let's talk about autonomy. Autonomous moving devices are on the rise everywhere around the world. You witnessed this in public or private mobility, in automatic data warehousing, in drones, in truck platooning, even in automated construction vehicles moving autonomously around a tunnel, for example, to build a new subway system. But all these autonomous devices, they have a common prerequisite. They need to know where in the world am I if they want to go from A to B. So they need mapping and positioning information, a base map plus where am I plus where am I going to. But we all know the problem with maps, right? I mean, if you look on the left side, this situation, how many of you have been in a car with a nav system going in a highway situation like this? And I guarantee you, your nav system did not know if it's on the top road or actually in a tunnel underneath. Or smartphones. You want to go from Shibuya Station to your next investors meeting, and that little blue spot on the Google map, you come out of the station, it's completely somewhere else than you are, and it's you know, kind of directing you in a way that you are completely lost. So the currently existing maps are not fit for autonomous driving. We need much more precision. We cannot work with GPS-based information without 3D positioning, and we cannot work with old maps that are always, whenever you use them, always out of date. So at Artisense, we have found a way to solve this problem. We call it dynamic 3D mapping and localization. And what it does is we take optical camera systems, so stuff you can buy in an IoT store, and we can buy it, combine it with our proprietary algorithm. This was developed at the Technical University in Munich at the Computer Vision Institute. And it converts the video data into digital point cloud information and live 3D maps. And this is what this looks like. On the right side, on the bottom, you see a video that is being made by a camera mounted onto a car driving through a street. The top screen shows you the computer vision interpretation of exactly the situation live. So while the car is moving, we're building a 3D map, and we are showing with this track where the robot of the car is inside the map. Quick short stop, what's the uniqueness of this technology? It's live 3D map creation. It's simultaneously localizing. It's not GPS dependent, and thereby we can go as close as one centimeter accuracy of positioning a vehicle inside this map. And it's low cost. It's not LiDAR or radar, stuff that costs $16,000 per unit. And it produces lightweight point cloud data that can easily scale, even if you want to use it on the cloud, with uplink, downlink, 3G is enough to use this type of data. So this has won us some critical acclaim. Our chief scientific officer, Professor Kramers in Munich, is the honorable uh, owner of the Leibniz Prize, which is the German National Scientific Prize, and some other conferences as well. And we're ready to go to market, because the potential of this map technology is huge. It's 10 billion US dollars per year that you can make with this type of technology. But while other companies that are currently in the mapping business are using their maps and enhancing it with some type of dynamic data like traffic information or traffic lights or passenger movement, we want to do something completely different. We want to build a new type of map, a dynamic 3D map, and thereby completely disrupt the mapping data space. That's what Artisense is setting out to do. And the opportunities are endless. You can see this easily. It's autonomous driving with cars or buses. It's given humanoid robots different vision of the world that they are moving around in. You can use it on factory automation robots that know exactly where to go in the production line to perform their task, or even drones. I'm not talking last mile. I'm talking last meter to your doorstep in your apartment complex in downtown Shinjuku. This is what this technology must be needed for. And we're already established in the US and in Germany, and we're setting up office in Japan. And we'd love you to join the ride. Come and partner with us on POCs. Come with us as great computer talent. And please, help us and invest into Japanese global operations. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you very okay, much. That was perfect timing. Thank you so much for finishing your pitch. Great timing, and that's always Q. Thank you. Okay, and uh, now we will move on to Q and A from the judges. So please handle him with care. Thank you for great presentation. Uh, I'm specialist for John Investor. Yes. So I have some questions. So your company of so kind so-called SRAM technologies. Yes. Yeah. So I think SRAM technology is a common technology. So what is your best core technology? What is your core mm. technology? And yep. what is your strength for uh, the products? Okay. Are so you a hardware company or software company? No, we're a software company, so we're AI algorithm. The hardware that I showed was just to demonstrate how it works. We can use any hardware, we're hardware agnostic. But uh, you were talking about SLAM, and the SLAM algorithm is readily available, but the quality of SLAM that's currently available is not this type of quality. So Professor Kramers, who's working in Munich, is the known specialist and expert for this worldwide, and we are using their PhD people who have now come with their IP into the company, and we can produce this proximity that I was talking about with visual SLAM, which is a different type of SLAM, and at a much higher rate. It's six times more precise, for example, than Orb Slam, which is currently available. And how, how many members do you have? And the, which country-based company? The company is based in US. The research is in Munich. The team is 10 people now. We just had seed financing just last week. And so we're now recruiting the talent, pulling them over. And at the end of the year, we'll be about 30 people. Thank you. Um, who, who is actually, who you envision is doing the mapping for you if you're thinking about the car scenarios, for example? Mm. Are you partnering with some car manufacturers or who is it? Yeah, I'm sorry, I can hardly are, hear you. Are you partnering with the car manufacturers or, or yeah. who is doing the actual mapping? Okay, so right now we're not partnering with car manufacturers because we want to develop the technology OEM agnostic, so we don't want to get into bed with one particular company in order you know, not to be able to scale. But the interesting thing about this technology is it can be retrofit. So for example, we're working with large fleet operation companies. There's a company in Japan we're in touch with. They have 250,000 vehicles in Japan. So if you put our ASIC chip onto those vehicles and 250,000 vehicles are driving around Japan, it instantaneously maps itself. And so we're democrat basically we're democratizing the way of building a map. You don't need a Google car. You can do it with your car and your car and my car. We can all do it. And we can all contribute to the cloud for this map to be building. Uh, no. How can you collect the data? So if uh, I think uh, you might use cloud sources. So if so, uh, what is the benefit for cloud sourcer to use your product? We'll have a payback model, so uh -huh. you give me data, I give you a few cents, and I resell the data for a few cents more. 